In this video, we will show how you can use the Portal Frame Builder to create the model for a complete building in SpaceGas, including the full geometry, dead loads, live loads, wind loads, load combinations, and steel design data. Let's start by clicking the Portal Frame Builder button in the renderer. You can choose between a monoslope or gable roof, and then define the roof slope by its pitch, or for a gable roof, by its ridge position. If you want the side wall columns to be aligned by their outside flanges rather than their center lines, you should tick the Align Column Outside Flanges option. Roof ties can be included, and you can add grid lines and dimensions. Next, we will define the basic frame geometry, keeping in mind that all dimensions are measured relative to the sheeting lines. The portal frames are set equally spaced by default, however you can change them by editing the base table at the bottom, and while you're there, also specify the side wall and roof bracing. Finally, you can define the purlin and girt details and fly brace positions. The purlin and girt depths are used to calculate the rafter and column positions relative to the sheeting lines, while their spacings are used to define the flange restraints in the steel member design data. Don't forget that you can zoom, pan, and rotate the model in the preview window just like you can in the main renderer window. You can also turn the sheeting off or on using the Show Sheeting button. Now let's click the Extra Data tab, and then define the end frame props and bracing. If the props are equally spaced, the quickest method is to click the Generate End Frame Props button. Specify how many props you want, select the required bracing, and then click OK. If you want to change the prop data or end wall bracing, you can just edit the data in the table. For example, if you want to add bracing to the central panel, you can just click the Braced checkbox for panel 2, and then click the Duplicate at Rear button if you want the same thing at the other end of the building. If the rear wall of the building is different to the front, you can click the Rear Wall tab and change its data as required. Let's now input knee braces for the internal frames by defining a length and a depth. The length is measured horizontally from the face of the column, while the depth is measured vertically from the column to rafter intersection point. Alternatively, we could have used haunches by specifying a length and the number of prismatic sections to approximate the taper. Switching to the Sections and Materials tab, we can define the section type for each component of the building, either by importing it from a library, or by using the Shape Builder. This completes the geometric input phase. We will now input the load generation and steel design settings, and then generate the complete space gas model. Let's move to the Loads tab and specify the dead load, live load, which can be defined directly or calculated automatically, followed by the wind loads. If the wind is assumed to be the same in all directions, you can just input one set of direction-specific data. However, if not, you must define the data for each building axis. You can specify the shielding multiplier directly or have it calculated for you. Likewise for the topographic multiplier. The terrain category can be constant or, if it changes as you get closer to the building, you can input the distance from the building to the point where it changes, and an average terrain height multiplier will then be used when the wind loads are generated. Openings and permeability in the walls and roof are handled by the use of internal pressure coefficients that you can specify for the maximum internal pressure and maximum internal suction cases. Normally, wind loads on the wall would be transferred to the columns through the girts, 
However, for situations such as tilt-up panel construction, you may want to change to having the eave ties and end frame rafters loaded instead. Now let's switch to the Load Cases tab. This table shows the primary and combination load cases that will be created to cater for the worst combinations of dead, live, and wind loads. You can disable unwanted load cases by changing to No in the Include column. And you can add other combinations. However, it is recommended that you do this in the normal load combinations datasheet once the data has been generated, rather than doing it here. Moving to the Design tab, you can control the steel design data that is generated for each member and the connection type for each connection. If you don't have the Buckling Analysis module, then you should untick the Calculate from Buckling Analysis options and specify the compression effective lengths manually. The other options in this form can generally be left at the default settings. However, once the portal frame model has been generated, you should carefully check the steel design data to make sure it is correct for your situation. The only thing left to do is click the Generate button. This generates the complete SpaceGas model, which you can view or edit using the normal tools available in SpaceGas. Finally, if you go back into the Portal Frame Builder tool, it will remember the settings for this model and allow you to make changes and then regenerate the model.